Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting, which was attended by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The meeting was held through video call technology, after which the Secretary General of the Cabinet, Dr. Yasser Al Nasser, made the following statement. The cabinet extended its Ramadan greetings to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praying that the kingdom will experience further progress and prosperity along with the Arab and Islamic nations. His Royal Highness the Premier then directed the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Physical Balance to look into delaying some of the fees that citizens are liable to pay. His Royal Highness then reviewed a report on the financial effects of government policy, a part of which is His Royal Highness's directive to include taxi drivers as beneficiaries of the financial and economic stimulus program. His Royal Highness then directed uh, the Ministry of Finance and National Economy to coordinate with the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunication to carry out the new policy. His Royal Highness affirmed that the government, as directed by His Majesty the King, is keen on ensuring the assistance of the livelihood of citizens by all government bureaus as part of the efforts to meet the exceptional challenges of the present moment. The Cabinet then discussed the various items on its agenda as follows. The Cabinet approved to reduce the operational expenditure budget of ministries and all public authorities by 30%, unless required otherwise according to public interest. The Cabinet also approved to reschedule a number of construction and consultation projects in light of the unexpected emerging expenses to combat the spread of the coronavirus. The Cabinet reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Minister of the Finance and National Economy on the emergency expenditures that have been allocated so far by the Cabinet from the General Budget to deal with the challenges imposed by the spread of the corona pandemic. The Cabinet approved two draft laws concerning civil service. The first draft law amends the provisions of the executive regulations of the civil service law in order to regulate the promotion of employees who have been subject to salary deduction penalties, regulate leaves without pay, and regulate the extension of the service of employees who reach the age of 60, as well as the extension regarding the incumbent of, a higher, of the higher positions. The second draft law amends the payroll, job benefits and eligibility controls. The Cabinet discussed permitting the establishment of sports clubs in the form of companies in accordance with the provisions of the Commercial Companies Law. The Cabinet approved the National Committee report banning the development, production, stockpiling and use of chemical weapons. The Cabinet approved a proposal to study the cases of individuals and families covered by Social Security who did not pay electricity bills before suspension of services to ensure continued delivery of electricity to cases that prove unable to benefit from Social Security to pay electricity bills. The Cabinet approved a proposal allocating a land in the Northern Government as a market and auction for livestock. The Cabinet approved the government's response to a proposal on building multi-storey parking spaces for services ministries. The Cabinet approved the government's response to a proposal mandate practical training in mosques or endowments as part of the graduation requirement from religious institutions. As for ministerial reports, the Cabinet reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Oil on the result of the 9th and 10th virtual OPEC meetings held on the 9th and 12th of April of this year. The Cabinet also took note of the results of the two extraordinary meetings of the Gulf Cooperation Council's Ministers of Commerce. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today visited the temporary intensive care unit at the Bahrain Defense Force BDF Hospital. The Ibrahim Khalil Kanu Medical Center used for isolation and treatment in the Salmania area and the Public Health Laboratory within the Ministry of Health to review the Kingdom's ongoing COVID-19 mitigation efforts. His Royal Highness highlighted that under the leadership of His Majesty the King and through His Majesty's far-reaching vision, the Kingdom of Bahrain has a successes across all sectors. He commended the strong commitment to social distancing guidelines demonstrated by the Kingdom's citizens, stressing that Bahrain's diverse population holds the key to combating the spread of COVID-19. 
In this regard, His Royal Highness paid tribute to the tireless efforts of the Kingdom's health professionals, praising their unwavering devotion to the continued health and safety of the wider community. His Royal Highness went on to underscore that the Kingdom's proactive and internationally recognized response to the global spread of COVID-19 has been bolstered by recent increases in available medical facilities and equipment, greatly enhanced Bahrain's ability to contain and treat the virus. His Royal Highness concluded by reiterating the Kingdom's commitment to safeguarding the health and safety of all by providing treatment and health care to all citizens and residents free of charge, pointing out that comprehensive access to testing and health care have greatly contributed to the Kingdom's high recovery rates. A number of senior officials accompanied His Royal Highness during the visit. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs extended sincere congratulations on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan. To His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Family, the Bahraini Government and People, as well as the Arab and Islamic Nations. In an online meeting chaired by Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the Council lauded the royal speech to the students which reflects keenness on continuity of the educational process. It also praised the royal directives to combat the coronavirus pandemic, commending the role of the government led by His Royal Highness the Premier and the dedicated efforts of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in this respect. It also lauded the great national efforts of Bahrain Task Force under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to deal with the requirements of the current situation. The Council praised the efforts and comp competence of the medical and nursing staff and the dedicated patriotic role of all the supportive and follow-up teams. It also lauded the spirit of cooperation of Bahraini people which was embodied in the high number of volunteers who enrolled in the national campaign to combat COVID-19. The Council commended the solidarity of the Bahraini people in these exceptional circumstances, pointing out that the results achieved by Bahrain and the recovery rates are a source of pride. It called on all people to remain committed to the instructions and regulations and benefit from the spirituality of the holy month of Ramadan at home, in light of the exceptional circumstances undergone by the whole world. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs discussed issues on its agenda, including opening Al-Fatih Mosque for Friday prayers in the presence of the Imam and a limited number of worshippers in order to broadcast Friday, Friday sermon and prayer via official audiovisual mass media. The Council approved that within the necessary medical and uh, preemptive regulations. The Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs Legal Panel for Moon Sighting announced it will hold its meetings at the Council's headquarters on Wednesday, the 22nd of April. The SCIA said it will receive reports about sighting the new moon of Ramadan and urge witnesses to report the sighting of the crescent. In support of the Kingdom's ongoing response to the global spread of COVID-19, currently being led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, engineers from Bahrain International Circuit BIC have designed a breathing apparatus for non-ICU patients. The device has been designed by BIC engineers in cooperation with the Respiratory Therapy Department, Medical Equipment Department and Intensive Care Doctors, Estelmania Medical Complex, S 
SMC to facilitate the recovery of non-critical cases. The breeding aids have received regular, regulatory approval following successful testing at SMC in conjunction with the BIC team led by BIC Chief Operating Officer Faiz Ramzi Faiz and endorsed by BIC Chief Executive Sheikh Salman bin Isa Al Khalifa. The first 100 devices, which were designed in just under two weeks following a directive from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, are already in production. BIC has designed two different devices, both of which meet the criteria set out by SMC. The first machine was created by design team led lead and BIC mechanical engineer Kamil Atan with the creation of the second machine led by Tariq Tajer. The team behind the design will make the blueprint designs freely available to organizations around the world seeking to develop similar solutions. In international news, the Coalition to Support Legitimacy in Yemen announced that the Iran-backed Houthi militia conducted around 1,500 ceasefire violations since its announcement until Sunday evening. The coalition added in its statement that the violations include hostile military operations through which light and heavy weapons were used along with ballistic missiles. The coalition affirmed its commitment to the ceasefire in Yemen and its application of the highest degree of self-restraint while reserving the right to respond to these repeated violations. In a related incident, uh, the Yemeni National Army has foiled Houthi assaults in the area of Nam to the east of the capital Sana'a. The army's official website said that the Houthi militias have attempted to attack a number of its positions along uh, Tehsal front west of Nam. The army said that it rolled back these attacks and have incurred heavy casualties among the Houthi ranks. As these events unfolded, the Iran-backed militia violated the ceasefire in other areas as well, including al Badr province, and also attacked uh, the army's positions in Ghania front. His Majesty King Abdullah bin Hussein II of Jordan said that the precautionary measures that his country has taken have helped to significantly contain the coronavirus outbreak. His Majesty added in an interview with the American news station CB CBS that the process of relaxing its lockdown measures which have been implemented in recent times. His Majesty expressed hope that Jordan will become able to export medical supplies and personnel to the countries that need medical assistance over the coming weeks. The chairman of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah Burhan, that the security systems of Sudan are solid and that no one will be allowed to doubt its loyalty to the country. He added in a high-profile meeting led by the army that the security establishment is carrying out its duties in preserving the national order and the country's integrity during the critical times, along with the various other measures that are being undertaken to shore up the economic and health sectors. Here's Barah Abdullah with the latest business news. Thank you, Sara. Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdallah and starting with the local stocks, as the Bahrain All Shares Index has closed at 1,318.96 points, marking a decrease of 1.19 points below the previous closing. This decrease was due to the fall in the commercial bank sector and investment sector. Results indicated that 57 equity transactions took place with a volume of 1,850,354 worth 273,615 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the services sector, representing 42.93% of the total value of securities traded. The airline's founder, Richard Branson, said today that Virgin Atlantic will only survive the coronavirus outbreak if it gets financial support from the British government. 
The Virgin Atlantic last month asked the government for emergency financial help in addition to the coronavirus package made available to all British companies. But the deal has not yet came to the reach. And now to Germany as they, they reopened all their stores. All that happening in Germany right now as they take precautionary measures taking place with their shops and all as Europe's largest economy began to restart public life after a four-week shutdown designed to curb the spread of the coronavirus. And now to check shoppers today visited outdoor markets for the first time in over a month as lockdown measures began to be steadily lifted. Last week, Czech authorities laid out a plan to slowly open up shops and services in an effort to ease restrictions to contain the coronavirus pandemic. Open-air markets are the first step in the scheme, along with limited group training for athletes. Still, the rules for social distancing, as well as mandatory wearing of face masks, remain in place with shoppers and traders in Prague seen adhering to the measures. Global digital platforms Google and Facebook will be forced to pay for news content in Australia. The government said today as the coronavirus pandemic causes a collapse in advertising revenue. Treasurer Joss Frydenberg said the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, ACCC, would release in late July draft rules for the platform to pay fair compensation for the journalistic content siphoned from news media. Frydenberg said he believed that Australia could succeed with other countries, including France and Spain, had failed in making Google and Facebook pay. And that's all for the business news for this evening. And it's back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Baron. People queued outside Taipei City's Dingyi's District Health Center, but they are not waiting to see a doctor, nurse or pharmacist. They're here to use a vending machine. Taipei has started selling face masks and automated machines like this. The method lightens the workload of pharmacists who were spending precious time distributing the gear to people. The surgical masks are purchased through the name-based mask distribution system aimed or amid the COVID-19 epidemic. Each machine is able to serve two people within one minute. Therefore, each machine can serve 1,100 customers a day.